Hey friends, this is Ram and you're watching Fitness Geek. In today's video, we will be talking about the data gateways for Power BI. In the previous video, we talked about the personal mode, we installed it and we used it to refresh our data sets. In today's video, we will be using the data gateways, the on-premise data gateways in standard mode. Uh, this, as we have talked previously, can be used by, you know, Power, uh, power Apps, uh, you know, Power Platforms. Uh, it's not just for Power BI. So this one uh, data gateway that you install in your virtual network or your on-premises, you can refresh all your uh, Power BI reports or if you have some Power uh, Platform related, you know, data sets that you have, you can refresh those as well. So let's dive into it. This is my report that I have built previously. Uh, this is the financial report that I have created, just, just a sample one. Uh, let's publish this to our Power BI workspace and I'll just click on my workspace and let's publish this let it replace the data set that is all right so currently we are publishing this report and the data set that is used is an excel sheet which is on my laptop so once you publish this and the report is in Power BI service you should not be able to refresh the data set unless there is a data gateway because the Power BI service, which is in cloud, is not able to communicate with your data set. This is the report, and if I go and check the data set, this is my data set refreshed. Uh, as we just published, the ref refreshed date is the recent, the latest. Let's quickly do a linear check. If I click here, let's open the lineage. You can see uh, on the left is our financial sample XLSX, which is locally, you know, uh, on my laptop. And if we see the settings for our data sets, the refresh history, you can see it was recently refreshed because we just published it again. And we currently don't have gateways. In our previous video, we installed the personal mode data gateway, which has been uninstalled. So currently we don't have any gateways available. This is the file that is feeding our Power BI report. It's on my local system. Let's go back to Power BI service and do a quick refresh of our data set. As expected, we were not able to refresh the data set because we do not have the data gateway. It was previously using the personal mode data gateway, which currently is not available. We have removed it. So our data set is not able to refresh. Let's go to our settings. Let's check our gateways. If we go to on-premise data gateways, before that, let's see the connection. This is the one that we are using for our report and the data gateway is unavailable. On our on-premise data gateways, we currently have no data gateways. So let's download the data gateway, the standard mode. As we have previously discussed, the standard mode is, you know, you know can be used with uh, multiple uh, applications, be it Power BI service or be it uh, Power Apps. So do check out my previous videos uh, on more details. So we have downloaded our data gateway exe. You can have a quick comparison of that. This is these are the types of gateways, the on-premise data gateways, which is one we are using. The personal mode we have used previously. The last one, the virtual network data gateway is currently uh, in public preview. So let's check what are the uh, you know requirements or what are the recommended uh, you know uh, specifications for the system where you can install the on-premise gateway in standard mode or a standard gateway. 
So the minimum requirements uh, is .NET Framework 4.72 or 4.8, that's okay. 64-bit uh, version Windows 10, that's fine for us. 4 gigs of disk space, that is also good. Uh, and for hardware, we have a requ recommended 8 core CPU, 8 GB of memory, 64-bit version for your Windows. Uh, when you're, if you're installing it in, in your Azure VM, just, you know, you can quickly search for which VMs you can use. Uh, you can, you know, install it in a VM in your virtual network, or you can have it installed in your on-premises. So these are the VMs that you can use. Uh, but yeah, uh, preferring uh, what amount of budget you have, you can go ahead with any of the, you know, recommended vCPUs and memory based Windows machine and you can install it there. Let's move ahead and uh, complete our installation process. I'll go back to my downloads, right, right, right click the file and run as administrator. We will need our account details. So let me just copy my account. This will be required for configuring our data gateway. So let's accept this and do the default installation. If you want, you can change the location of the files or the binaries as, as you uh, might say. So once the installation is done, this page will pop up. Installation was successful. Now you need to configure the data gateway. This is where you provide your email address, link to your Power BI service. And that's my account. Let me sign in. Once completed, it should ask for whether you want to register a new gateway or you want to migrate, restore, or take over, take over an existing one. For this demo or this video, we will be registering a new data gateway. Let's give it a name. You can, you know, uh, based on your naming convention, you can have something like this. For example, I have FG hyphen data gateway hyphen prod and a recovery key, this key is important. So if whatever key you provide here, make sure you save it in a secure place, be it a key vault or some, some sort of password manager. This will be useful while recovering your data gateways. Click configure. It should take a couple of seconds. And that's it. The gateway is online and ready to be used. Let's head back to our Power BI service. Actually, let's check the service name and whether it's running or not if you scroll down in your services.msc the name is on premises data gateway service you can see uh, you can you, you can see it's running on a service account make sure it is automatic so whenever your vm is you know having a reboot uh, it should come online itself And that's all good. Let's refresh this page. And once you refresh, we should be able to see our newly configured data gateway. Let's go back to compromise data gateways. And as you can see, our FG data gateway prod is currently available. Let's click on this and it is online. So the data gateway installation is done. Now let's get back to our report. Let's see the, let's go back to dataset 
and the settings. That's our data set. It will still not be able to refresh because we need to configure our the data set to use this data gateway. Let's go to the settings. You can see uh, our data gateway pops up, but it is not configured correctly as it says. So it will not be able to use this for the existing data set. Let's allow cloud data sources and any custom data connectors to refresh through this gateway. That's okay. Let's configure this and save this. Once done, we will be creating our data source or the data connection. Let's go to connection. It was a file connection, uh, which currently, you know, is not working. So we'll need to create the data connection again using the data gateway. Let me click new. Use the data gateway that we just installed. Give it a name. Let's give it some uh, financial underscore xlsx. That's, that's the file that we are using as the data set the connection type it will be a file so we will scroll down based on whatever your uh, connection you know is if it's a sql server on premise you can use that uh, for us it's an excel file so we will just use the file then the path of the file currently it's in downloads so you need to use your full location let me copy this and the file name authentication is windows and I'll privacy level would be organization I will use my Windows username and password once done you should be able to save it and it is online So this will be used in our data set to connect and refresh. So if you head back to the gateways, you can see this file now comes up in our data gateway or the data source included in this. And then you click on the connection that we just created and you click apply. And that's it. We have successfully configured our file to use the data gateway. Head back to our data set and click refresh now. And this should successfully refresh our data set. And that's it. So now our data set is using the data gateway that we installed in standard mode or the on-premise data gateway and refreshed our data set successfully. So that's all for today's video. Uh, if, if you haven't uh, subscribed yet, please do subscribe as that helps me, uh, you know, in creating more uh, better content. Every time I, you know, think of some content, uh, it definitely helps me to see some uh, traffic on my YouTube channel. So thanks for all the support. Uh, it's been a pleasure and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot and keep supporting.